Hey, thanks for watching this video. Um, in this episode, I'm going to go over the machine, the build of it. I'm going to show you step by step a slideshow of the photos of this machine being built, um, the plywood, how we did it, what I cut it out, and how the vinyl graphics were put on. And then I'm going to give you a live footage of, in detail, technical things about the machine itself. So stay tuned and check it out. Okay, so here's the side panel. These panels are made out of three-quarter MDO, which is medium density overlay. And that's the one side cut out. Here we're showing the bottom. That's framed out of a two by four, and it has casters on the bottom. Uh, it's easy to rotate around. Here you can see the side, me uh, just mounting the side panel on there. And the bottom is a solid floor. Okay, here we are again with the side being mounted. Now we have both sides. Um, this thing's pretty tall, so we had to lay it down as I was putting it together. Now we have the front panel on. You can see the small pieces of plywood inside for support. So that is a one piece through the bottom there. That's one cutout. Now we have the marquee applied there, showing that part. And now this is the bottom of the control panel. Um, that is, it's in two parts, so that's the lower half. Now you can see there the top half that has the controls cut out. Now there's a gap there so that the wires can be allowed to uh, have room in between. Okay, you can see a different view there. And also that shelf slides out. That is the drawer for the keyboard. That was pretty much day one um, that I built for that day. Now you can see the bottom shelves for the consoles and the computer. That was all built inside there as well. Now we're at the priming stages. So basically I primed all the edges of these panels um, and filled them so that you wouldn't see the plywood core. Here we are, the sides. That is the aluminum wrapped area. That's all been primed and filled. That's the, the sliding drawer for the keyboard. And these are all in my paint booth. I have a spray booth, so I made it easy to be able to spray all these things. There I am before I start painting. Got all suited up, ready to spray. Here we are. This is the color. This is just black, but it's a matte finish. It's a really high durable automotive grade paint that I sprayed with. Um, it's a hardener, reducer, and paint. So it's a three-part paint. Everything was sprayed black. Now here it is outside of my booth. I gave it a couple days to dry before I wanted to apply my graphics. Ahead of time I had the graphics already designed so that you could see here is the layout in Photoshop that I had. There's the other side and then the other side. That's the Tekken side. That's the front panel, uh, the keyboard, the under part, and the front carriage part. Here we are all together. This has been applied. All the graphics are applied. No buttons have been put in yet. And obviously the computer is hooked up and running. So this is kind of a dry run. I had the marquee put in. You can see there um, just some more side shots of the artwork so that you can see the different detail. Here we are, the marquee illuminated. That's at night with the lighting. So it glows really well shows the lighting coming through here we are um, i moved it into the room that i had it initially you can see the surround sound is now applied also to it this has a 5.1 surround sound system um, logitech so there's a sub inside the back and then the speakers here we are putting all the buttons on that's an ipac 4 so all the wires connect to the ipac 4 which is basically keystrokes, and then that wires run into the computer. Now this took me eight hours to wire these up because the wires had to be daisy chained for the lights. So each light loops from one to the next to be able to have 
lighting for all the buttons. Here we are, we have the buttons inside and on there. You see the trackball is in place, the hap joysticks are in place. So it's starting to come together here really well now. Here we are, fin finished product. Um, I had these adjustable stools, which are padded and very comfortable to be able to have them, you know, around the, the arcade if we did a four player game, which is kind of cool. Here's a night shot showing Space Invaders. You can see the lighting, how well that looks at night. Okay, here we are, the finished product. Um, I stand 5'11", so you can see how tall this machine is. That is a 42-inch screen, so it's really big. Um, it's, it's a really nice machine, and if you have the room for it, it is an awesome piece of equipment to add to any man cave or game room. Okay, so here we are at the main title, and in this spot here, you're basically going through all the different systems that are on the wheel. And basically, I'll go through real quick here and show you what it in entails. Mujin, basically what this is, this is a fighting, all fighting games, um, a different calibration of people, basically a community of people build games that are all fighting different characters, uh, sometimes make, make up characters, or what they'll do is they'll take different characters from different games and they'll put them in together and make their own game. So you could have Mortal Kombat versus uh, Sonic. So just weird games, all kind of different games, which is really cool. They come from all over different places. And here I'm going to cycle through. Now also over here you'll see it shows you the year and the name of the game. So here we are, Capcom versus Evolution Max. This is kind of cool. This is like funny Simpson characters, all kind of weird different uh, cartoon characters that fight each other. A lot of these games never actually existed in the retail market, so these are just things that people made on their own, but they're really unique. Now, there's quite a few games in here. And as you can see, I can cycle through, and it'll give you a preview of each game prior to you playing it. And we can alphabetically search. And I can also make a favorites list. Because normally I have to cycle through this entire wheel. But if I go to favorites, I can view, let's see, add. So I just added that game to my favorites. So now if I view it, see I only have one in there. So now that one game is in there. Let's let's add another one. Let's let's go to this Ninja Turtles. So favorite add. Now if I view my favorites, see now you see it in there. So it's a, just a quick way to get to your games without having to go through the entire wheel. And we can do this through any system which is really handy if you have a lot of games that you play on a regular basis. It's a quick way to get to them. All right, let's get back to the main wheel here. So that was Mujin. We got Neo Geo Pocket. All right, I'll just go through here real quick. So it's going to show you again. Here's a little bit of art and a preview of the games. Okay, and that's Neo Geo Pocket. Neo Geo CD. Now not every system has wheel art, which you see here, this is kind of a generic text. Um, they're not all out there, so can't have it for every, most of the consoles or systems there are there for, but not every one of them. But there still is visual gameplay for each one. So this is Neo Geo CD. 
Okay, let's go to the next one. Turbo Graphics 16 PC Engine. Same thing, there is no wheel art. A lot of these things are from, well this particular one obviously is from Japan, that's what the whole system is, but some of the games in Maine you'll see, they're, they're coming from all, all different places. Super Graphics. Okay, once again. And each system that I have on here is a complete set for every system or whatever is available at the time. So like your Nintendo, your Super Nintendo, your Genesis, your PlayStation 1, they're complete sets. Turbo Graphics 16. Now not all of these are going to, no this particular one doesn't even have a wheel art at all or a visual art. So that's still in the making. Nintendo 64. Now this one we do have the wheel art, box art, and video gameplay. Now in this particular case, for this emulation, because an N6, a Nintendo 64 controller had so many buttons and it's really hard to configure my joystick and eight buttons to work well with this emulator. So basically what I have in this situation is a Nintendo 64 USB controller. And basically I have a hub on here um, a USB hub that I would hook that to. It's already been set up in the emulation and basically for any game that is a Nintendo 64 game you would use the N64 controller so it's more authentic than just a controller or a joystick. Now for a lot of games the joystick is perfect but in this particular case it's not so much. All right, so let's just go through a couple more here. And in the emulation, the graphics are actually slightly better than what the original console was because they're upscaling the graphics. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a nice feature to have. Plus, most of this stuff is coming through almost 5.1 surround sound. It's not true, but it's almost like a virtual. So it's just a lot better sounding quality than it did in the, in the old days when these cons, you know, consoles were out. All right, so that's Nintendo 64. We got Nintendo DS. Okay, here we are, Nintendo. I'm just gonna cycle through these. Um, I don't wanna have this drag out too long. But I'll show you real quick here, you see the game has the, the cartridge and the gameplay. All your Nintendo. Game Boy Color. GameCube. GameCube looks really good on here. Jimmy Neutron, 3DO, I won't go in every wheel because it'll just drag out too much, so I'll just go hit the basic main ones. Here we are, VGA5, VG5000, RCA Studios 2. Sega 32X. Sega CD. All right, moving on. Dreamcast. Yeah. 
The Dreamcast is another one that I would use the actual uh, PS2 controller for. Got your box art. That was a great game. Royal Rumble, I like that game. I still actually have the actual copy of it too for the Dreamcast. I used to play that a lot. Game Gear. Sega Genesis. A lot of great games here. Batman. Sega Master System. Sega M2. the supermodel nineteen ninety seven ninety eight so we're in that ninety late nineties era These were basically look like arcade games. Nami, Noami, I'm not sure how you say that. Sega. From my understanding, this is basically Dreamcast uh, in Japan, and they had these like in arcades where you would use a coin, quarters to be able to play these games. From my understanding, I could be wrong. Sega Saturn. This is another console that I actually want to get. Uh, the actual console, I, I do want to get this hardware. When I find it for the right price, I'll get it. PlayStation 1. Now in this one alone, there is 1,400 titles just in PlayStation 1 alone. I mean, you can see here, you're going through, you're just in the F's, W's. I use the PS2 controller and pretty much set up the configuration just like a PlayStation, well, it is a PlayStation controller, so it really works well um, to be able to play these games exactly the way they were intended to, to be played with the controller. All right. Scum VM. Uh, basically, this is like a, I believe, PC-based games. Um, puzzle type of games. You see here, you see the little mouse, uh, the skeleton hand, and then you would move it around. Okay, moving back. Super Nintendo. Complete set. A lot of great titles. Mid 90s. Type X, Tatio Type X. Now these games are as new as 2010. Um, Street Fighter 4. Right down here, Arcade Edition 2010. This emulation is going to be a little more demanding on your video and your processor, so you're going to need a little better hard drive, or not hard drive, but processor and video card to be able to handle these these games. As you can see, they look they look really good. Turbo Graphics 16. This is another console I do want to get. Zinc. Your Atari. 2600, 5200, 7800. Full sets of each. Atari Jaguar. Short lived system. Atari Lynx. Amstrad. 
Thomas Wave, Bally's Astrocade, Wonder Swan, ColecoVision, Casio, PV1000, I never even heard of that, Daphne, now this is a classic, uh, these were laser discs, in the time they were ahead of their they were ahead of their time. There was basically live video footage um, and then superimposed images in the front that you interacted with basically like in Dragon's Lair. This is a classic. You only moved left, right, up or down and then one button and it was all a time-based time-based game. Basically at a certain time frame a light would blink and it would tell you left, right, up or down and you would have to hit it right on that time frame. But in its time, in the early 80s, this was amazing looking to be able to play something like this. Uh, Dragon's Lair was my favorite really, really good game. Space Ace, same idea. This was an outer space. Really awesome games. Okay, Arcadia 2001, Adventure Vision, this is a very small device, almost like your small little arcade that you used to have your um, little Donkey Kong, your Galaga, your little games like that. This looks almost like Vetrix, uh, I've never actually seen it before, I didn't know it existed. Channel F. This is in the mid 70s. Future Pinball. This is cool. This has got a bunch of uh, tables, pinball tables. Some are really nice renderings. A lot of cool artwork. Okay, moving on to Vetrix. This is one of my classics as I was a child. I got this uh, the year it actually came out, I believe it was 1981, let's see, what, what's some of the years, uh, 82, I'm sorry, 81 or 82 it might have came out, um, this was a really cool, cool console, I still have my original console and probably 10, 12 games for it, so I was really excited to be able to have this on here. Um, to play. It's really cool. Nintendo F Famcom. Basically Japanese version of Super Nintendo. Game Boy. Game Boy Advance. Virtual Boy. This definitely would give you a headache after a while with the red. You know, it's cool to see, but I don't think I could play it for very long. Wii, so a complete set of Wii games. Television, I actually just picked up one of these the other day for like $10 at a yard sale. Um, yard sale site, it's not really yard sale season, but it was cool. I think it came with three games, the two controllers, all the hookups for $10. That was awesome. Jukebox. Here you can actually add uh, music and add it to a playlist and it'll just play songs. You know, you could keep it on here and just let it play random songs. Now MAME, this is going to be the main one. This is your arcade emulation. Um, this, not only can you alphabetical, alphabetically select it, but you can go by genre and only in this one. So see, you could go by sports, different, you can select it because there's so many. There's actually close to 10,000 games just in this one area. So there's so many that you can not only alphabetical ties, but you can go with the, um, with, by genre. Now the artwork and the thing on these, it's gonna look, way more astonishing than than the other system you're gonna see a lot of 3d animation almost on every one of these games 
as as a background. It's not gonna be just a box art. You'll see here, I'll just let you see a couple of them. You see how the hearts are floating around. You'll see different artwork. Really, really cool. I'm gonna try a game out here for you so you guys can see. Um, let's go with hyper fighting, right? Street Fighter. So basically you hit the select button, the game will go right in. Okay, so basically once you get in the game, it comes up. Now I have it set up here. Um, rather than putting coins in the game, you basically, I have a coin button. So this is player one coin and player one star. So here I'm gonna add the coins and then here we go. So I'm gonna select the character. Ryu was always my favorite. I'll just give you a couple seconds of gameplay so you can see what it looks like. Get my butt kicked here. Okay, so that's it. Pretty much, um, that's how you play a game. Now to exit it, I just have two buttons I hold in and it gets right back out. It's that easy. So let's move on. These are right now, this is my favorite list. There is just so many good games that are on here. Um, this is the main area for sure. This is the bread and butter of this whole system. Anything you could think of, every arcade game. Some of the games even support four player. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is one of them. The Simpsons, X-Men. Those are games that you can actually play with four people at the same time, which is really, really cool. I remember when I came out in the arcade, uh, that was just really a showstopper. Simpsons, another one. All right, moving on, here's another system here. Odyssey. And back to Mugen. So that's pretty much it. That's all the systems that are on here. So here I'm going to show you some close-ups of the system itself. This is the uh, marquee on the top. This is the Logitech 5.1 surround sound system. And it has this controller board here. So I have up to six different inputs and you can control the volume by here and then also you can set it um, there's stereo 4.1 2.1 and then 3d is like 5.1 now it also has a remote so if I pull this out I have a wireless remote that I can adjust you know from further away so let's say I want to turn it up you see here I can turn it up turn it back down Now on this shelf, this, this shelf pulls out. You can see I have artwork here on the top. This is a wireless Logitech keyboard. This is the PS2 controller that I said I have for some of the emulations. And they it's basically hooked up to this hub. Now this is my, my wireless. This is for the PlayStation controller. And then the two... Uh, Nintendo 64 USB controllers would also hook to this. So I pull this out if I'm working on a keyboard and then I can just push it back out of the way when I'm not using it. Now I put this on here, I designed this little navigation um, logos and stuff here for people that, if let's say somebody's at my house and I'm not around, they can kind of follow these steps to, to learn how to, to use this machine. Because it be, can be quite confusing initially. There's a lot going on. Basically, I actually took pictures of these buttons and then added the text and, and you know made it all together like that. All right, so that's right in front of the button controls. And then the artwork here you can see is Ryu. You got the rollerball here. This is really cool for your golf games, your marble madness, um, some games like that. It also 
is the mouse for the computer. Beside the mouse on the keyboard, this is my regular, this is the mouse basically. These are your three buttons, your left, right, and your center buttons. And these are um, HAP joysticks, four way with LED lighted buttons. Now these buttons to me are a lot better than just having a regular non-lighted button but it's a lot more work because you got to daisy chain all them together so that they all are wired together all right so now on the sides here you see the artwork this side is Mortal Kombat I basically put a collage of Mortal Kombat characters together and then did the artwork for it now the material this is this is printed on a large format printer that I have a large format digital printer and then I put a laminate on this but it's a, a non-slip matte finished like a like a non-slip laminate so it's really strong you know a nail um, a coin a ring isn't gonna damage the graphics so you don't have to worry about somebody scratching it up and it also gives a nice matte finish because if it's high gloss you get too many reflections indoors okay so this is one of the side speakers and you can see on the back that's probably hard to tell with the lighting but I have a bracket that I made here that that mounts that together and here's the art on the side this is that aluminum um, that's been around that you've seen it goes all the way around. This side is the the Tekken. I just put the flash on so it's a little better here. So this is the Tekken side. I'm big into fighting games so I wanted to use two of the best fighting games. Um, as my background art. Now I'm going to go back over here and show you that bracket I was talking about. So basically this is just a flat piece of aluminum that I bent. It's mounted to the speaker. I drilled a hole here for the speaker wires and then you see they'll go through underneath inside of here and then it's mounted to the back. Okay. Underneath on the bottom I have red LEDs so that it glows from underneath so when the lights are out it really looks nice and now on the front of this in front of the TV so you didn't see the actual TV frame this is a quarter inch piece of clear acrylic that I cut out to you know match the dimension of the TV and then I put a digital graphic the same as I have on all the machine all over and then that's actually velcroed to the face of the television so it just gives it a, a complete bezel look rather than just having a TV screen in there okay moving down to the bottom this is the shelving and this is one piece in the front that's one whole structure which you see in the slideshow how it was produced and then these shelves so we got the PS3 now there's the two hard drives now the arcade that you just saw running to be able to have that whole system on there it is running on four terabytes four terabyte external hard drive the silver thing in the middle there that is my um, switch box for my Wi-Fi not Wi-Fi for my optic so I have four optics because the sound card only has two inputs so between my PS3 and the Xbox 360 and then the computer itself I needed I needed more than I had and actually I think of the Wii I have USB. No, the original Xbox is also wide um, optic. 
and then I have my camera there, my 360 camera, my move camera. So that's the Wii that's modded. This original Xbox that's modded. And then the 360. And then that's just a Nintendo uh, balance pad there. And then the PC there. And then we got a Silver GameCube. Okay. So most all the controls in this hyperspin are working off of this. So as I move this up or down, that's how I'm changing the wheel. And then I also have selected on here, you can see I have genre, favorite, back, select. And I have these marked player one, player three, player two, player four. And then up here is coin three and player three. So this would be how that person, now you would only use this in MAME, any other, any kind of arcade uh, game that needed coins. If it's like Genesis, Super Nintendo, something like that, you don't need to add a coin. So you would just push player start. Okay. So we'll go on this side, this is the player two and player four. Rather than having a, a little person, you know, I made a little guy on there. It's like a little cool dude on each of them. I thought it was kind of neat. Okay. Now the surround sound for the back is, I had a, I wanted to figure out a way to make it so that the speakers stayed connected to the system. I didn't want to have to have the speakers behind me on the ceiling or, or down on the ground because if I ever want to move this around, I want it to be all one self-contained unit. So I built these square, this is a three quarter, no one inch, I can't remember if I use one inch. It looks like one inch square aluminum tubing. Okay, so then it's basically cut right there and bent so that that's one continuous piece. And then I built these brackets again on the back and mounted it so the wire for the speakers run all the way through out the back end because this is hollow and then they run down inside and then they hook internally. So you see no wires and that's kind of like a reinforcement structure. So it makes it really strong and rigid and it's all self-contained and it's right above your head so it really makes a nice sound for you so you get your two left and rights your center above you and then the two back surround sound uh, what I did on the second machines that I built just to, to cut back on my finishing work was I used melamine which is a fiber board and then I used T-molding on the edges rather than having to go through all the steps that I made on mine which was priming and painting the edges it was a lot of labor I mean it was my own so it's not a big deal but to be productive and make these um, I had to come up with a different process so I used the you know regular arcade team molding that the, they have. Um, now this part here, this is also aluminum. This is maybe half inch, and this is three quarter inch um, aluminum angle iron, and that's sprayed in the same satin black, so that gives a real nice finish on the top and bottom, a clean look. And what I did with when I designed this is I made the graphics, everything fade to black on the edge. If you look around here, you can see it fades to black, it fades to black on the edges here. It fades to black. So it gives it a real nice soft look when you look at the graphics on the sides. All right. You have any other questions? Please leave comments and I'll be sure to check them out and get back to you as easy as I can. Thank you.